हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर नवीन अग्रवाल आई एम एन इंटरवेंशियल कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट प्रैक्टिसिंग एंड वलसाड एंड वापी डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ गुजरात माय टॉपिक फॉर टुडेज डिस्कशन इज रिगार्डिंग अ वेरी यूनिक फिनोमिना नोन एज अ मायोकार्डियल ब्रिज नाउ विल बी डिस्कसिंग वॉट एक्जैक्टली इट इज हाउ डज इट अफेक्ट द प्रोग्नोसिस ऑफ द पेशेंट हाउ डज इट अफेक्ट द लाइफ ऑफ द पेशेंट वट एक्जैक्टली हैपन्स वेन अ हार्ट अटैक ऑकर्स इन दीज पेशेंट्स एंड हाउ डज इट अफेक्ट द लॉन्जिटिविटी ऑफ द पेशेंट दीज आर द पॉइंट्स विच विल बी डिस्कसिंग एंड इट इज अनॉमली विच इज रादर क्वाइट कॉमन एंड may be seen in around 2 to 3% of the total population so it's quite common and we'll be discussing the, uh, what exactly and how exactly does it affect the life of the patient this topic is going to be very interesting so i would request you to see the video till the end and the people who are new to my channel i would request them to subscribe to my channel as this gives us a lot of uh, motivation and inspiration to continue doing the good work and keep producing good videos for your education coming back to the topic basically heart is supplied by multiple vessels which give blood supply to the heart and heart attack is a phenomena when these coronary arteries or the blood vessels which supply to the heart they get damaged or blocked and they develop a heart attack and uh, because of uh, lack of blood supply the tissue of the heart starts to die usually these coronary vessels uh, travel above the surface of the heart which is known as the epicardial course of the coronary vessels that means that uh, as far as possible these blood vessels travel over the surface of the heart and keep on giving multiple collaterals which perfuse into the myocardium and supply tissue to the muscles of the heart but sometimes what happens that uh, because of some natural anomalies some play of nature what happens that these vessels sometimes go inside the muscular layer and then come out this segment of the uh, coronary vessel which goes inside the muscle and then comes out is known as a myocardial bridge segment because this uh, segment is going inside the muscle tissue there is a chances that the, uh, during every contraction of the heart the muscle tissue will compress the vessel and the blood flow will get obstructed when the heart relaxes the uh, vessel uh, will open up and the blood flow will again start so this phenomena uh, causes obstruction of the blood supply during systole or the contraction phase of the heart and once the start starts to relax uh, heart starts to relax then the blood flow is again restored this phenomenon is known as myocardial bridge and this has to be really taken into account as, especially when we are doing an angioplasty or we are doing any surgery or uh, whenever even we are medically managing the patients because uh, the blood flow of the heart gets compromised because of this problem uh, the myocardial bridge can be of multiple severity in some patients it can be really mild and the contraction of the muscle will not be so severe so blood flow restriction will not be very much but in some cases where the myocardial bridge is very severe and the complete artery gets obliterated during the systole then the blood flow is compromised and the heart gets lesser amount of blood supply uh, one important aspect of this is that uh, although the patient may or may not be in, uh, sympt having symptoms because of this but sometimes whenever uh, we have uh, we develop any blockage in that area or we have to treat any uh, blockage with stent or bypass surgery at that area then it becomes a problem and uh, then the life of the cardiologist becomes difficult because any stent or any metal or any uh, object which we place inside the vessel in that area will get compressed by the muscle and will get fractured or damaged so it becomes a big issue and sometimes the results of angioplasty will not be difficult uh, will be uh, will be although the procedure will not be difficult but the uh, results will be compromised uh, during bypass surgery also the life of the surgeon becomes difficult because he has to cut open the muscle tissue and then remove the uh, coronary artery and there if at all he requires to put a myocardial graft he has to put it inside the muscle tissue and then re-suture the muscle so the life of the surgeon also becomes difficult whenever he is doing a bypass grafting in the presence of a myocardial bridge so this is an important technical detail which needs to be kept in mind as soon as the uh, cardiologist does an angiography and this uh, information uh, has to be kept in mind whenever an angioplasty or a bypass surgery needs to be done Usually the uh, myocardial bridge unless the obstruction is very severe the blood flow to the tissue is not compromised and the patient does not develop any symptoms no shortness of breath no chest pain usually uh, these symptoms are not there some patients where there are very severe myocardial bridge and the muscle tissue is very thick then these patients may have some exertional symptoms or exertional breathlessness might be there but usually the, most of these patients are asymptomatic and it is usually not picked up on a routine e electrocardiogram or an echocardiogram because uh, in ecg and echo uh, the, yeah, that may be completely normal in echo if the muscle tissue is very thick or if the patient is having any signs of cardiomyopathy then these are the patients who are more likely to have a myocardial bridge and especially when an angiography is done in these patients the presence of the bridge should be ruled out in these patients angiography is the best test to detect the presence of a myocardial bridge although ct angio can also be helpful in detection of a myocardial bridge 
but uh, the uh, problem is best picked up on a routine conventional catheter angio because conventional catheter angio consists of a video image of the uh, coronary flow pattern and there in multiple frames you can compare the vessel size in systole and the vessel size in diastole and you can see that in systole the vessel will appear very narrow and in the diastole of the relaxation phase the vessel will appear broad. So comparison of these two images on a video uh, by a conventional catheter angio will give us a lot of information. Uh, CT angio if it gives a three dimensional picture it can also guide us but usually CT angio might sometimes miss this diagnosis. Conventional catheter angio is considered more reliable in this scenario. Cardiac MRI can also give us this diagnosis whenever uh, we are doing a, uh, the tissue thickness is assessed on a cardiac MRI the muscle thickness and the course of the vessels is seen on a cardiac MRI that can also give us the diagnosis but traditionally speaking majority of the cases are picked up on a conventional catheter angio whenever we are doing an angio for chest pain evaluation or other symptoms uh, other diagnostic modalities like ECG eco treadmill are very likely to miss the presence of a myocardial bridge. Now we come to the treatment aspect usually uh, whenever a patient is having a myocardial bridge majority of the patients don't require any treatment but if at all the tissue is very thick and the patient is having some symptoms we can give high dose beta blockers these beta blockers will help the muscle of the tissue to relax and the compression of the uh, myocardial bridge in this uh, scenario will be lesser the force exerted by the muscle on the uh, cardiac vessels will be lesser and comparatively the symptoms also will become lesser. Uh, in these cases if at all there is any blockage in this area we try to finish the stent just before or just after the myocardial bridge segment we try that our stent does not go inside the myocardial bridge segment because if it goes inside the myocardial bridge that area is very likely to get damaged and the chances of restenosis and reblockage will be very high in this scenario so we try to avoid using a stent in the area where there is a myocardial bridge even if there is a borderline blockage also uh, cholesterol deposition also so in this area we try to avoid doing a stent in this case while the surgeon can do a bypass grafting but also in uh, the surgeon setting also it becomes technical difficult because the surgeon has to cut the muscle uh, get the coronary out and then put a graft in this but uh, life is much easier for a surgeon because he can see the problem directly and manage it accordingly but for a cardiologist it makes a lot of problems whenever there is a myocardial bridge just before or after the coronary artery blockage surgery for an isolated myocardial bridge is not done uh, if the surgeon is doing a bypass grafting for a blockage then uh, usually it, uh, the surgeon can open it up and treat the bridge accordingly but isolated myocardial bridge usually surgeons don't do a surgery unless the patient symptom is very severe and not being controlled by medicines then only uh, it becomes an indication for surgery that the surgeon will open up and cut out the muscle tissue and remove the coronary from inside the vessel and place it in a different way above the epicardial surface but usually isolated surgery for a myocardial bridge is not done uh, if surgery is done for some other reason that kind uh, that point of time the surgeon can assess the problem this topic is important for common people because myocardial bridge is a very common phenomenon it is seen in a lot of patients but the problem with this scenario is that uh, people don't understand and whenever we try to explain them that there is uh, some portion of the uh, vessel which is going inside the muscle they tend to not understand and the problems with the stent and problems with the bypass surgery becomes very difficult for the patient to understand uh, why we are treating these patients despite the, uh, them having a normal coronary angio and no blockage that also becomes very difficult for a patient to understand by this topic I was, wish to deliver this information and make the common people understand what exactly is a myocardial bridge and why is it important in the life of a common people and why exactly and what exactly are the indications to treat these patients and how does it affect the performance of a routine angioplasty procedure. The purpose of my channel is that I wish to make scientifically correct information and valuable information in common layman language available to you so that you can discuss your patient and manage your patient in a better way and you become better informed about your patient. Uh, if at all you like the concept of my channel you can uh, like my video subscribe to my channel and if you feel that the videos are useful for your friends and relatives you can share the video links with your friends and if at all you feel that in future you have some other question and queries which you feel that on which we should make a more videos or if you have some comments regarding this topic you can discuss it in the comment section and we'll be happy to uh, discuss those topics with you and make more videos on newer topics. So this is Dr. Naveen Agrawal and in end I would thank you all for a very patient listening and I hope that the concept of Michael Bridge I have made it clear to you why exactly and what exactly is its importance and I hope that uh, I have solved all your queries but if still you have any queries you can feel free to ask me about them. The people who are new to my channel I would request them to subscribe to my channel as this gives us a lot of uh, va uh, valuable motivation and inspiration to continue the good work as we are doing now. Thank you.